What up players, it's Wolfboss Tay up in this mud. Today we're gonna be doing Eldar skin, specifically the Eldar skin for the Ranger set. But if you want to use this recipe for anything else that might have uh, good elves, like High Elves, Wood Elves, Eldar in general. Although most Eldar cover their skin. Some of them, like I've noticed on Guardians and uh, the Dire Avenger Champion sometimes and pilots will have their, their skin showing. Um, you want this healthier skin tone. But um, let me. I, the reason I put my Archon up here is because I wanted to show you the difference between healthy Eldar and sickly Dark Eldar. The Dark Eldar is more, more pale with really severe highlighting and the Dark, or the dark Eldar is like that, I mean, and the, the Craft World Eldar, I guess we'll call it, looks a lot more um, healthy. So stay tuned and you'll learn how we paint that up. And oh yeah, you can also see a little bit of that in our girl here, the Julie Berry. Her skin tone is um, very light and smooth as well. This was painted with the old paint still. I'm gonna see if I can paint up another spell singer with better, um, you know, with, with, with the current range and I get that done pretty soon. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of this video. <laughs> Did you guys see Julie? Was she just here? Um, no? <gasps> Julie! What up, players? It's Wolboss Tay up in this mud, doing a little showcase video for you now in the first part of this. Just showing off the Eldar Rangers that I was able to get painted up. So, if you um, haven't seen my How to Paint an Eldar Ranger videos, I love these figures. These figures are so amazing. And, yeah, they just look so great. And I really, really like all of them. There's only five different poses, but I mean, when you compare this to the Mandrakes for the Dark Eldar, or, um, those are the ones that pop right into my head immediately just because those are um, another similar unit that come in a box of five, come in a package of five with supposedly different, different, you know, sculpts and positions and whatnot, rather than, like, the striking scorpions or howling banshees or warp spiders or those guys who swooping hawks who all of them have kind of the same pretty much the same poses these and I feel like the mandrakes were made to look like each one was kind of different with the way their their bodies look so even though they're some of them might be standing in the same kind of direction aiming off to to the um to like their their left then I feel like some of them still have different, you know, different details like the helmet on this guy or the unhelmeted heads or the guy with the hood and the guy that's kneeling. I mean, just the look of these models are so good next to each other, all five. So let me put them next to each other. And you saw how I got my results on painting this guy up. I haven't done any touch up since painting tutorial he looks exactly like this still but I thought today would be a good chance to do a uh, s skin tutorial for how I do Eldar skin so stay tuned and I will let you uh, know what colors you need right now to do Eldar skin I use Bugman's glow as the base then Cadian flesh tone followed by Kislev flesh a little bit of Raglan Flesh Shade. And those are all the colors you need when we're building it back up after the shade. We're just using Kislev Flesh one more time. So, we're going to get started. And the first thing you're going to do is find an Eldar model that you want to paint the skin of. For me, I'm going to use this little guy over here. And we're just going to paint his exposed skin area with Bugman's Glow. I remember when I first used this paint, I thought, oh man, this 
this skin paint because I've been only used to the Talern flesh and I just thought this paint is like too red. It looks like looks like his head is like a some kind of berry or something. It's way red. But um it's just really there for it to provide the base color and we're gonna paint over it in just a little while. So for these rangers, not much skin, really just the heads on the two. This guy over here, this kneeling guy. Those are really only the, the only ones that have exposed skin showing. So I like to paint all of them in a assembly line kind of style. Sorry folks, I'm just trying to get this guy done while my first guy dries a little bit. And then we'll go on to the next step. So after, I'm trying to think right, right off the top of my head, are there any Eldar models that are predominantly, you know, that have big stretches of skin on them? We're gonna have to paint their skin. I can't really think of any off the top of my head. Hmm. Yeah, you know, now that I think about it, aren't there any other Eldar models? It looks like these, um, this technique is also just going to need to be used on models like Wood Elves. High Elves can use this technique with the new model range. So this isn't just for painting Eldar skin, but it's really for any any elf-ish like creature in the Warhammer or Warhammer 40k universe. You just don't want to get too thick. It's really it spreads on really easily as a base color. It's one of the easier bases I found to work with. Alright, so the first one should be about dry now. So it's a little moist, so I'm gonna give it just one more second do the other two video, uh, the other two guys in the video. There's this guy over here with a hood over his face, very much like the Glade Guard from Fantasy. So we're going to paint the face first and then we're going to correct the robe. That's what my process usually is. Go from the inside out rather than painting the inside of the cloak and then working your way to the skin. Yeah, so this technique can be used for any Eldar or Elf, High Elf, or Wood Elf. Not Dark Elf or Dark Eldar though. Those have a more sickly, unhealthy kind of tone to them that you can kind of see in my other, I think I did a How to Paint Dark Eldar skin video from a long time ago. The paints are all out of date now, but you can still use the conversion chart to get you the equivalents from other ranges and should come out looking pretty similarly. Let's put my guys with skin on here on this side. Keep it easier to organize. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do after this is pretty much dry is you're gonna take your Cadian flesh tone and you're just going to layer on top of the Bugman's Glow. And when using your brush, you want to just make sure that you can't see any obvious brush strokes. So just feather out that paint. Feather the paint around. And make sure it doesn't pool or clump in any area. that dry a bit while we move on to some of the other models.
great thing I've noticed about the flesh paints in the range is that for me they are so thinned down already coming out of the pot that I don't really use them sometimes with my wet palette or I don't really use my wet palette with them. And it's a bad habit. You can really use your wet palette with anything, but I just I just don't for some reason. What was that? You guys hear that? Goodness. Okay, I'm gonna let these guys dry. I'm gonna keep working, get this Kadian or Kislev flesh tone. No, Kadian flesh tone. And then we wanna get the Kislev flesh tone ready so that we can use that on top. Alright, see you in just a little bit when the next step is ready. Okay, so now we're gonna move on with our Kislev flesh. And we're going to keep painting upwards. So now that uh, the Kislev flesh is really what makes this flesh to me different from, it's what's gonna make the, the, the color scheme different from painting, say, like a human. So we're gonna be really careful about where we paint and um, just be careful of the brush strokes. So we're just gonna keep adding uh, and um, moving the brush around. And when you're painting, especially the ranger's heads, but um, even some of the other non-helmeted Eldar, you just wanna be careful about getting this color only in the raised areas. The, the ears and the um, tops of the heads as much as possible. I mean, we're gonna go over it with a shade in just a little bit, but still, the, the more you can, sorry about that, the more you can keep on near the top, the better. So we end up with something like that. Next thing, we're going to take our Raglan Flesh Shade and we're just going to do a nice thin coating. We're not slapping this on, but we're just going to do a little thin coating of the entire area. So I'm going to let this dry, then when we come back, we're going to do final highlighting and eyeballs. Okay, we are back, and now we're going to work on highlighting the skin just a little bit. So we're going to take our Kislev flesh again, and we're going to go to work on the shaded skin. So I always start with these knife ears so characteristic of elves and Eldar. And then what I like to do is start from the brow line. Just follow this ridge all the way back. Patrick Stewart slope. Man, I remember watching Star Trek The Next Generation when I was a kid. I was a kid, right? So I didn't really, I didn't really get it and I just remember it coming on every Saturday afternoon. I would sit in front of the TV. I would really try hard to get into it and watch it, but 15, 20 minutes in, I would be asleep on my rug, the TV on, 
and then I wouldn't wake up until I heard and I'd be I'd wake up and my leg would be asleep and the credits would be playing and I'd be like ah oh, I slept through another episode of Star Trek the Next Generation bugger oh I I heard that's a bad word in some parts of the world okay Chaos Black or Abaddon Black we're gonna paint the eyeballs now so make sure you get a brush with a very good fine tip for this I'm gonna be using my secret weapon the Scepter Gold 2 synthetic Windsor Newton brush but any brush with a um, very nice good tip will work and this is how I do all my eyes so this is kind of like for all of you out there who wonder how I get my eyes done and um, it's just a horizontal slash and I really find that if you want to practice doing your eyes you should pick up an ogre model an ogre kingdoms model because they you know the the faces are a lot bigger so it's really easy to practice your technique so now we're going to do the same thing but we're going to cover the black with white ah there goes my air conditioner so that's what you end up with be right back and finally we're going to paint the pupil by once again going back to our black. So you're just now going to do a little slash down the center. And I try to keep it close to the uh, to the nose. like that game operation you played when you were a kid. Yeah, I find this uh, Chaos Black is really kind of finicky. Abaddon Black is really, it's really good. You don't want it to just stick in the middle of the eyeball. You want it to connect top to bottom. Otherwise, they look like cuckoo. There we go. So, you can kind of see, I'll zoom in as much as I can. Some light there. Mm, I have to turn them upside down. Stupid setup. Yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Why am I holding it like this? Okay, so that is how you paint an Eldar face. Yeah, you can kind of see it like right about there. The eyes take a little while to get used to, but uh, you know. And not that hard once you do it. And really, this goes across the board for Eldar, 
elves, wood elves, high elves, like I said before. And um, it's really just a quick and painless way to get a nice lighter color scheme or color tone to your pointy eared miniatures. I'm going to show you right now a comparison between what I feel like is a good or decent paint scheme for a human versus a uh, versus an Eldar or an elf. I'm going to use this catechin here. So, as you can see, the catechin skin is a lot uh, ruddier. It's not as it's not pink. It's, it's kind of this dark, flushed brown. That's because he's been like out in the sun a lot. Looks like that. And another example I'll show you is my Aiden character, my Space Marine character. Here, where now he this guy is a little bit more pale, but he doesn't have that almost yellowy kind of aspect to his skin that the Eldar do. Because they are inhuman, they're not human, so they're not going to have the same kind of skin quality, skin tone as um, humans do. And I, I, I like that. I, it's along with their ears, it kind of to me it reinforces the fact that elves are not human and that uh, they should look a little bit different but they still have shading which you can tell from the Raikland flesh shade wash that we did and um, yeah you can add more or less as you like but to me I think this is a pretty a pretty good approximation of what your skin should look like. If you're following my how to paint an Eldar Rangers video then all you have to do is paint the mouth or covering, the covering over the mouth in triad bark, like the rest of the brown leathers. And then for the hair, I just did uh, a bunch of grays, lightening up from celestial gray to ceramite white. And um, if you want to shade in some known oil and then go back over with that, then you can do that. But um, yeah, that, I didn't do that for this one because you might want to use this painting recipe for any kind of elf that you're doing, like Glade Guard, or Wood Elves, or High Elves, or, or anything like that. And I wanted to use a new colors because I think the last time I tried to paint elf skin in a tutorial, it was for a sword master in the Island of Blood box kit, but I was using previous range colors. And yeah, so this was just my go at doing the new current range of colors, trying to do a proper elf skin tutorial. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope you were able to gain some something out of it. And uh, this is also different from dark elf style. Like I think I might have mentioned it in another video, but dark elf skin, or maybe it was just earlier in this video, and I've uh, forgot. Dark elf skin tends to be more pale and drained of color, so it doesn't have this yellow, yellowish kind of tinge to it. It's much more dark and. Uh, or not dark, but just pale with uh, more severe highlighting and shading. So to me, this is a good contrast because you have a dark, when you have a dark Eldar, um, let me see if I've got any around that I can use. When you have two, an Eldar model contrasted with a dark Eldar model, then the skin tones really obvious when you place them next to each other. Yeah, here we go. So, perfect example is right here. And actually, I'll use uh, my finished Eldar model here. So this is a finished model next to my Eldar Archon. And this you can really see what the difference is. So I'm going to slap this onto the beginning of this video so people can see um, what I mean and the difference between these two models. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, leave me a comment if you feel like it. And don't forget to check out uh, Project One Gaming and these Project Log 
and his, his all of his pages. I'm gonna put a QR code at the end of the video. And don't forget to like them on Facebook, send them a message on Facebook with your YouTube username, and you can be entered to win a 2,500 point Necron army for absolutely flipping free players. It just boggles my mind, but yeah really awesome project really awesome guy really awesome company commission painting service check them out information is all in the links below and um, hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and we'll see you in the next one